Hello everybody, Hawk here. Hey, have you ever wanted to launch multiple commands, multiple actions all at the same time when performing with Ableton Live? I know I have. For example, I wanted to start this clip playing, stop that clip, arm record this channel, go in to record on this clip, you know, multiple actions all at the same time. And the last thing I wanted to do was do a pedal dance where I had to like, you know, step on this pedal and this pedal and then this switch over here and, and to get all that stuff going. So wouldn't it be really cool if I could launch all those commands, all of those actions from like a single foot switch? Wouldn't that be cool? Well, I think I have the solution here. It's this. TC Automation's M-List MIDI foot switch. I can do everything that I was just talking about from this foot switch, from this one switch right here. I can launch multiple commands. I can even launch multiple steps of a song in sequence where each step of that song has multiple commands from this foot switch. I'm pretty sure this is the solution that at least I've been looking for. So uh, let me explain how this works. But you know, before we do that, if you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, please remember to like and subscribe. And you know, it really helps the channel. So uh, let's get into this. What I've done is I've cooked up a very short sort of demonstration song with this. It's, it's, you know, like a proof of concept live looping song. Uh, and so let's take a look at that. And uh, then after we take a look at that and see what I'm doing in, in the demo song, then I'll break it all down for you and show you how I've gotten this all programmed. But you know, this right here, no more IAC bus routing, no more complicated pedal dancing. Let's see how this works. Here we go. Two, three, four. Four, four, two. So that is the demonstration proof of concept song. So let's check out how I have programmed all that into the M list and how all of that is coordinated with the actions inside of Ableton Live. And you'll be able to see like exactly what's happening on each step of the song and what actions are occurring and yeah, how all that's put together. So let's check this out. Here's my spreadsheet of all the actions that I want to occur at each step of my song. Each step in my song is a command pack composed of several MIDI notes mapped to specific controls in live. For example, to get my song recording started in step one, I enable the metronome, wait 200 milliseconds, and then enable the arrangement record button. You can see how the notes in the command pack line up with the MIDI notes mapped to the controls in live. Then in step two, 
I arm the first audio track where I want to record a clip loop of my guitar. At the same time, I disable the channel that I was using to monitor my guitar input. I wait 400 milliseconds for live to record arm the track before I send the launch clip command to begin recording. Again, you can see how the notes in the command pack line up with the MIDI notes mapped to the controls in live. Also, part of step two is another clip launch command, but it's not sent out for a whole four seconds after the last clip launch command. This way, live will wait until the next downbeat, as determined by the global quantized setting, in this case, four bars, to punch out of recording for this clip. So then, yeah, that's the first guitar loop. For step three, I launch a pre-recorded drum beat, then arm the MIDI track where I want to play bass synth, wait 400 milliseconds for live to record arm this track, then launch the clip I want to record my synth bass loop into. Again, after all this, I wait four seconds and send another clip launch command so that live will punch me out of clip recording after four bars. And so it goes for a total of six steps in my demo song, with each step containing a command pack that sends out multiple MIDI note commands. Next, let me show you how I program the note commands into the mList so that the mList can now control Ableton Live. To MIDI map our commands, we'll put Ableton Live into MIDI mapping mode and then pair MIDI note numbers from our controller keyboard with actions in Live. For example, let's say we want to record arm this track. So let's map C minus one to the track's arm recording button. Select it and press C minus one and it's mapped. Next, I want to record into this first clip slot. Let's assign C sharp minus one to launch the clip. At the same time, I also want to start this drum beat clip playing. So let's assign D minus one to launch the clip. Next, to program the mList, I need to connect my MIDI controller's MIDI output to the mList's MIDI input. My understanding is that there will be a USB port available in the near future as an option to this five pin standard MIDI connection currently installed on my mList. Now, I'll build a command pack in mList containing these notes so that I can launch all of these actions in live at the same time. To do this, I'll use mList's auto build command pack mode. So, C minus one arms the track for recording. Then, before I can launch the clip recording, I need to give live a few milliseconds to catch up. I can't send the arm track and clip recording launch commands at exactly the same time. I've experimented with the delay times and 400 milliseconds seems to do the job in these situations. After the delay, I'll send C sharp minus one to launch the clip. Then D minus one to launch that drum beat clip. Next, I'm going to add another delay time, a nice long four second delay time. Followed by C sharp minus one again. What this does is to auto punch out my clip recording on the next downbeat according to my global quantized setting. In this example, it's set to one bar, and in my earlier demo song, I had it set to four bars. So there's the command pack. It's number 28 in the mList's memory. Now, I'll connect the mList's MIDI input to my computer's MIDI output. If you're using the mList with a five pin MIDI port, you'll need a USB to five pin MIDI adapter. Fortunately, my audio interface has five pin MIDI connections, so I'm good to go. Before I string a series of command packs together into a song, 
I usually like to check individual command packs to make sure that I've programmed in all the notes and delay times correctly. This function is called QStaticCommandPack. Let's queue up command pack 28 and check to make sure it's working properly. Notice how after 4 seconds, Emlis sent another C-sharp minus 1, and Live registered this note but waited to punch out until the downbeat of bar 3. Again, this is because Live's global quantize is set to 1 bar in this example. So yeah, as you can see, this command pack is working perfectly. After programming all of my command packs, I string them together into a song and I can review my song steps using the Review a Song mode. Here's what the demo song that I played earlier looks like. When I'm actually ready to fire off each step in my song from the foot switch, I go to cue a song and load up my song. Okay, so now that we know how all of that's programmed, uh, both in Ableton Live and the M list to control Ableton Live, let's take a look at the demo song again, and you'll be able to have that, hopefully have that light bulb moment where you put everything together and you can really see and visualize what's happening with each step uh, every single time I push the foot switch. Um, one thing to keep in mind as you're watching my demonstration song is that I launch my commands before the downbeat. Anytime before the downbeat. It could be on the three, it could be on the and of four. I personally, I kind of like the and of four. And what's happening is that when I launch the commands in front of the downbeat, then Ableton Live will take care of the downbeat of, will take care of all the commands on the next downbeat, so to speak. Um, so that that is based on the launch quantization setting up there and the, on the left corner of Ableton Live. Um, and for the demo song, I have four bars. So that's the launch quantization setting that I have for the demo song. So anytime before the four bars is up, uh, within that last bar, usually uh, on the four, the end of four, I'll press this, and then it takes me into a punch in on the downbeat, Ableton Live does. This just sends out the command, Ableton Live sort of executes that command right on the downbeat. And then the M list, this really cool thing in the M list is the fact that it waits for a little while and then it sends out another command based on that command pack, and then it punches me out. Well, Ableton Live will punch me out based on the incoming MIDI note that is going to punch me out, but Ableton Live waits till the next downbeat based on the launch quantization setting. So uh, I know that's a lot. Just, just watch the demo again and watch where I press this. I'm anywhere in front of that downbeat, I'm good, and then Ableton Live will take care of the exact in and out punches for me. So uh, let's check this out one last time. Here we go. Two, three, four. Four, two. Bass line. you
wanna go With my endless midi foot switch I'm in complete control So yeah, that's the M-List MIDI foot switch by TC Automation. I think this thing is pretty groundbreaking. I mean, sure, it's just a MIDI foot switch, but it's so much more, and I'm really just scratching the surface here. I mean, the fact that I can launch command packs, multiple commands all at the same time from one foot switch, uh, and then chain those together in a song, that's just, that's, you know, that's groundbreaking. Um, and again, that means no more IAC bus programming to do all this stuff within Ableton Live, and uh, no more pedal dancing. I just, I press this pedal all the time. I'm good to go. Uh, this one foot switch, it's gonna step me through my song. I can even go forward or backwards in my song with these two foot switches, but generally speaking, if I'm just proceeding forward in my song, uh, just one foot switch. I can also program sets so that once it, a song ends, I can get to the next song. Um, and then start stepping through those as well. Uh, I should mention that this is really cool. There is a wireless switch available for this. And this is really cool because what that means is that I don't always have to be in front of my pedal to push this and to execute the next uh, command pack or song step. I could be running around the stage and I could have that wireless switch uh, attached to my arm or stuck on my guitar or uh, on my microphone, wherever I want that wireless switch. So that is going to make this ability to launch these command packs even better. And when I say I'm just scratching the surface, I mean, I'm just sending out MIDI note messages from this. I mean, there's so much more you could do with this. For example, um, MIDI patch changes. You could send out MIDI patch changes. And that means that you could change a patch on your hardware synthesizer uh, based on the step of your song. Um, you could coordinate those MIDI note commands with uh, lighting scenes, and you could be changing lighting scenes at the same time as you're stepping through your song. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing a lot more work with this and hopefully trying out that uh, wireless switch as well uh, that TC Automation uh, has been developing. Uh, so yeah, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm really excited about this and I'm looking forward to uh, working a lot more with this and uh, doing more live looping sessions and just stage systems where I can coordinate everything with Ableton Live. So, so yeah, the M-List MIDI foot switch by TC Automation. I will leave links below for you guys uh, to easily access uh, all the social media platforms and uh, pick up one of these for yourself maybe and get in on the ground floor, so to speak, right? All right. Uh, Thank you for watching, everybody. Again, if you've uh, enjoyed the content here, please like and subscribe. Maybe uh, help support, pick up um, a music producer t-shirt or a mug back there. Um, yeah, and uh, I appreciate everybody checking this out and I will see you next time. Ciao.